Hello, welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and we are here at the DSP Leaders Forum and uh, I'm talking with Sanjay Mewada, Chief Strategy Officer at Netcracker and Phil Rowe, Global General Manager at AT&T. Gentlemen, welcome both. Good to see you both. Let's Good to be here. start with you, Phil, if we could. From a data and cyber security perspective, Phil, what's changed, do you think, in the digital age? God, how long have we got, Martin? I mean, a huge amount. I think yeah, there's no doubt that, that, that digitization, the digital economy has driven huge change, new business models, new technologies, new architectures. Um, it's also driven significant benefits for enterprises, new products and services, new mechanisms of going to market, opening up new markets, huge amount. Unfortunately, it's also driven a huge change in behavior and motivation of the cyber, cyber criminals, those people that would like to exploit that. Mm. If you think about the two components of, of, of the digital economy that are actually delivering those benefits, one is data. I mean, data is the fuel that drives the digital economy. It's what people want. It, it's, it gives enterprises the intelligence to, to uh, capitalize on the benefits out of the digital economy. And the proliferation of endpoints endpoints of new ways of reaching their customers, whether it's mobile devices, endpoints in uh, new services that they deliver to the marketplace, like IoT devices and things that they're using to deliver those new services. Uh, so we have data, we have proliferation of endpoints, but data is also the gold and the currency of the cyber criminal. That's what they're after. They want that data because that's valuable to them. They can sell the content of that data. They can exploit it. They can use it for blackmail. They can do all sorts of things with that data. And endpoints increase risk. Multiple endpoints, proliferation of endpoints increases risk for the organization. It creates vulnerabilities. It creates more opportunities and more spaces where those cyber criminals can exploit the architecture. So huge benefit, great gain, but increased risk and increased value to the cyber criminals who will exploit that risk. And I think that's a big worry for the CEOs of the, of, the, of the enterprises. I think many CEOs are more worried about security than they are about recession, than they are about comp competition. You know, if, 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 an, if a CEO doesn't manage his organization through a recession properly, he'll probably get fired. If he creates a major security risk and a major security compromise for his customer's data, he'll go to jail. And that's, you know, that's a big issue for the CEOs of this world. So an awful amount has changed as a result of that digitization, the digital economy and the technology that drives it. Thanks, Phil. Sanjay, what do you want to add to that? Well, I guess two things. One is, as a result of all the things that Phil just mentioned, there has been a significant amount of awareness. And an aware consumer, whether it's on the enterprise side or on the mass market side, uh, is a good thing. But it's also challenging because they're also aware of their rights. And so you see GDPR, you see new regulation coming into force to protect the privacy rights, to protect data rights, to, pro to ensure informed consent and all of that. What that does, it puts a significant obligation on providers, whether it is providers such as Phil in terms of connectivity or providers of systems such as ourselves to say, okay, we also have to step up, be at the leading edge, at the cutting edge, of being able to ensure that ultimately whoever is the end user customer, whether it's enterprise or mass market, that they feel confident, that they feel that their data is gonna be safe and secure, and that there's gonna be good control over the collection, over the distribution, over the analysis, and over the access to all that data that is being generated at multiple endpoints, as Phil said, through 5G, through IoT, through M2M, all of those things will create a tsunami of data that needs to be managed, right, in an environment that is more regulated, rightfully so, and also very aware consumers. Thanks, Sanjay. I'm going to stay with you for the first part of the, of the, the next question, which is this. We'll come to Phil in a sec. What impact will the new network and IT technologies have on data and cybersecurity, do you think? I think it'll have an extensive impact. So if you start with the network first, as you move to 5G, you know, extremely low latency, very high bandwidth, very high capacity networks, as you put fiber in every enterprise and almost every household, 
as you put applications such as IoT and M2M, that explosion of endpoints is going to generate enormous amount of data. Um, that's number one. Number two, as all of that gets virtualized, you will see that network being distributed. So it's not a single owner, a single entity controlling it end to end. It's going to be multiple VNF providers, multiple uh, entities working together to create this virtualization. The more distributed it is, the harder it gets to manage all that data in a, in a, in a meaningful way. Number three, you're going to make the edge smarter. That means a lot of intelligence is going to go to the edge. That means a lot of the data is going to get stored, processed, accessed, distributed at the edge. That creates, again, a multiplier around data security that has to be very, very carefully managed. The services side, before we go into the IT, the services that are going to be layered on this network, you're going to deliver a lot of those services using partners. Again, now a lot of your customer data, your service data, your network data is going to be accessed, used, processed, distributed by entities other than yourself as a service provider. Again, that creates uh, an environment um, it creates gaps, as Phil said earlier, to be able to uh, access data through unauthorized means or through unauthorized entities. If you get into the IT side, everything is moving into the cloud. Cloud operations, and it's one thing if it is private cloud, if it's one thing if it is one entity managing it, but in a world where it's public cloud, in a world where it's multi-cloud, again, the data gets distributed, multiple entities have access to it, and therefore, again, to own it end to end, which is what our customers expect, they own the uh, security end to end, all of us have to step up and make sure that we are not only compliant, that we follow the regulation, but are also at the leading edge of these technologies, not just in terms of deployment and enablement, but security as the common denominator across all of this. Thank you. Phil, what's your take on this? No, I, I, absolutely. I mean, I agree with, with everything that Sanjay said. I mean, it, and, and I'll add to that, particularly the last couple of points that, that Sanjay was making. If you think about you know, the, the, the new technologies, the <coughs> are I infinitely more complex than they ever were before. And complexity, some of that complexity is driven by the fact that it's now comprising of multiple components, some of it third party, some of it proprietary but lots of different technologies all coming together to deliver this new world, the new network. Um, and of course, what that does, it, <coughs> you know, I'm sure, and I, and I have every confidence that many of those technologies as individual components are very secure. But when you bring them together and you try and integrate them, that's when you create the, 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 the security risks. That's where you create the gaps and the seams that can be exploited. Um, so the integration of that techno those technologies and bringing them together is key to be able to ensure that you're creating a secure platform. And of course, <coughs> you know, as Sanjay says, data is getting distributed in to many places. In fact, many corporations won't even know where their data is. It disappears into a cloud somewhere and they don't know where it is. It's traversing borders, it's traversing uh, different regulatory authorities with very different views about security and what to do about it and how to handle it. So that in itself creates another risk. So <coughs> it's just multiplying the risk factors for these organizations. And it, <coughs> the, the danger is, of course, that it will slow down adoption of the digital economy. If we're not people. We can, you, you can create so much fear out there that this is a huge problem and it, you know, security of your data is going to be a major problem, that, that people, the enterprise will get caught in the headlights and do nothing. And they shouldn't do that. They shouldn't fear it. They absolutely shouldn't be afraid. They need to drive to digital. They need to drive to a digital economy, otherwise they'll get left behind. And they need to have confidence in us as an industry that we're gonna help them solve that security problem so that they can go forward with confidence. Brilliant, thank you both so much. Roger, thank you.